County, his work in your home, your family, your life, the future. Give him a shout. Come on. Yeah. Give him all over the world. Yeah, I aspire to the one, only one who is light. You are light. light. I aspire to the one, only one who is light. You are light. Shout those three out. You are light. You are light. You are grace. You are light. Do it again. You are light. You are light. What about light? You are light. Grace. You are grace. There we go. There we go. There we go. Truth. You are truth. Sing it again. You are truth.
Strongholds, workers of iniquity and lawlessness, you have no right to stand before the anointed Christ without bowing your knee.
about this little boy. When we first received him, of course, you know, there's the, uh, you know, the feeling of, oh, this is something you don't want to go near. And so when I hugged him, the tendency was not to touch the tumor side of his face. The tendency was to touch the nice side, the good side, the healthy side. And I thought to myself, you know, uh, I, I need to touch that area of his body. In other words, I must feel a part of his pain. I can't, I can't speak to him without touching and loving him. So I grabbed him and I hugged him and I held that side of his face, which is the tumor. And, it, you know, and, it, and to me, it, it did something for me because, you know, when you, uh, when you partake of somebody else's pain, you don't do it with words only. You do it with touching and feeling and emotion. That's what I feel that we need to understand. That's the life of Christ. That's what he did. And, and I was thinking about that because there's a story in the Bible about lepers. And I'm not comparing this young boy to a leper, but if you think about it, in the time of Christ, the, the, the greatest sickness at the time, the greatest plague on humanity was leprosy. If you go back to the book of Leviticus, you will see that there were certain laws, rituals, so that they could be healed of leprosy. And if they were, it was a ritual of cleansing that to go through. And I'm going to take you back to that because of what Jesus himself did. There were laws. You, you had to stay so many feet away from a leper. You couldn't touch a leper. You couldn't go close to a leper according to the law of Moses. And so when he spoke through Moses, he said to Moses, this is going to be the ritual of cleansing for a, a leper. Understanding now, lepers were cast outside the city. Lepers were cast outside their tent. When Miriam got leprosy, she was cast outside for seven days. Seven days. Now, this is important because if you look at typology in the Bible, we are now maybe our 6,000th year since, since man. I'm not saying the earth is 6,000 years old. It's millions. It's hundreds of millions of years old. But actually, if you look at mankind, and I'm living, we right now in China, one of the oldest uh, countries in the world. And I would be in the street right now preaching to you, but, and I'm, I was going to go. But there are restrictions upon people that even mention the name of Christ. We have visited orphanages in, the, uh, in Beijing. We've uh, visited orphanages in the different cities we've been to. And we see that they can, do every, they can do every good work they want, but they cannot attribute that to Christ. They cannot use His name, <coughs> even though what they are doing is what Christ told us to do. And so, um, while, while we see that mankind could be from creation of mankind 6,000 years old, this could be the 6,000th year of, of the history of the Bible, if you look at Moses and unto Christ, thousands of years, 2,000 years from Christ until now, that's 6,000 years. If you take what Peter said is 1,000 years is as a day in the sight of God, that's six days. If you just look at it, just humor me for a minute with, uh, theologically as I tell you that in God's eyes, 1,000 years is likened unto a day. Now, that would say that we're at our sixth day going into the seventh day the 7,000th year since the history in, within the Bible as it's taught us. That would be that we could be coming to the seventh day, which is a day of cleansing. And so that's, if you look at it like that, you can see why I'm so positive. I'm positive about what is going to happen with mankind, what is going to happen to the nations of the earth. If you look at what's happening today with Russia, you see the Cold War era almost wanting to come back, a revisitation of the Cold War between Russia and China. And if you look at the prophecies I've given, it's, it's recently, specifically, and Sunil will come on in a few minutes. If you look at that, you'll see that this is absolutely happening, especially what's happening in Syria, and the way Russia is defending Syria and trying to stop uh, the countries from pr protecting those children, from what, uh, the chemical uh, stuff that's taking place and poisoning of these children. Um, you can see this, I mean, even with the G20 uh, summit right now and all that's going on, it's, it's unfolding before our very eyes. But this is what I see in it. Yes, we see the tumor on the face. Can it be fixed? Absolutely. Can we change the beautiful face? No. It's there for life. So it is with, with, with life as it is now. We see what's taking place. Can it be changed? Yes. How did God do it in the Cold War era at the time? He had a Ronald Reagan. And it was a Ronald Reagan that stood up and took away the tumor. Now we see that this is trying to grow again and trying to come back to where there'll be this cold, 
uh, this be this, this, this coldness between Russia and America and try to bring back an era. And, and I see it happening. But to me, it tells me that there will be another kind of Ronald Reagan that has to be emerged, that has to be raised up so that this will take care of the tumor in, within the nations of the world. It's history repeating itself. I'm telling you right now what is going to happen after Barack Obama is you're going to see what's going to start transpiring. It may not happen in the very next election, maybe afterwards, but you'll see as, as this accumulates and there's, there's a threat of war amongst nations, God will once again raise up a man that will deal with it. And that's what I'm looking to. But I'm saying all of this so you can see why I look at the seventh year or the 7,000th year as a year of restoration or a year of cleansing. Now, that's the bigger picture. But the, the ritual was that they had to be washed by blood. In other words, they're offering the sacrifice that he'd sprinkle blood over the leper. And then they'd have to wash them in water. And then that would be a seven-day period. And then they'd be cleansed. Now, that's the ritual of the Old Testament. Now, understanding that, think about what happened to Jesus. It's an amazing story that there is a leper that, and I'm going to re actually read it to you because I feel like you should, you should be reminded of, of the actual story. It's in Mark chapter 1. And let me, let me just find it quickly. I've got my little pulpit here in the form of a fan. Mark chapter 1 verse 40. And I'm going to read it to you because he goes through a series of of journeys are in Mark chapter 1. Of course, it's, 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 it's much shorter. But he says in verse 40, Now a leper came to Jesus, imploring him, kneeling down to him and, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. In other words, I'm not sure if you will do this. Because you see, the representation of God was so bad that they thought that it was the will of God to, for them to be in the position of being a leper. If you are willing, God is always willing to cleanse, to help, to touch, to change lives. But his, his thing was, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. Now, you've got to understand, Jesus broke a number of Levitical laws when he did that. And you just remember there were Pharisees and Sadducees and priests that were watching Jesus and ready to accuse him and say, you've just broken the law like he did when he was on the Sabbath and they were taking of the wheat. They, they accused them. And of course, this were, these were people that were not really obeying the law. They were, they, they were wanting to, to um, impart the law and punish those who didn't obey the law, but they weren't themselves. Jesus touches the leper. But it was not the touch that healed the leper. Please understand this, because you're going to see two things here that I'm explaining to you. It's so beautiful. Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched the leper. And then he said to him, he used words. Now you remember, this is the same God that said, let there be light, and there was light. The same God that spoke, and creation happened. So God's words create. He doesn't need to touch. But Jesus first touched, and then he spoke. And, and I want to show you what actually happened. It's very beautiful. He said, he stretched his hand, and then he spoke and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And, and this is what the scriptures tell us. It says, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left the man. It didn't say as soon as he touched him. So why did Jesus touch him? Because God in the form of man came to touch mankind you see for throughout the old testament man was at a distance god was on a mountain he was speaking with a loud voice and thunder and lightning people were running away from him they were afraid of him this is what the lord did now god sends his son and says go and draw close to them the old testament was god far away the new testament is god close to you drawing you to him and that's what he did. He said, I want to show you that I'm going to touch, break the law and touch this man. Now, I'm talking about laws that were made by man, that, that, that actually were made by man. But God also set them in. But Jesus touched him, but his words actually healed him. And you know, when I touched this little boy's tumor, I felt love. I felt compassion. I felt that I was sharing his pain. And that's what Christ was doing. He was saying, one day I will be on a cross 
and I will be receiving the sins of mankind, and I will be receiving the sickness of mankind. Because the Bible says, by the stripes he was healed. And remember, they striped him 39 times. Speaking of the 39 major diseases in the world, if you look at it, you'll see it. It's the 39 major diseases of the world, 39 stripes on the back, not 40, 39 specifically. And, and so that's what they did to him. And it says, by those stripes we were healed. And so he knew that he was going to take onto his body leprosy. And so that lepers could be healed. And so he touched the leper knowing that one day leprosy would be imparted onto his body on the cross. So that all the sickness would come upon him so that mankind could be healed. Yes, we still have lepers today. But they, leprosy is, out, I mean, there's 300 maybe cases in the whole world of leprosy. But there are other kinds of leprosies. He was moved by compassion. He wasn't moved by law. He was moved by compassion, which means that that is what heals people's lives. Um, but as you could see, while we were worshiping, there was a, a tremendous compassion. Here with Yong, you can sense compassion. Even the people around us are sensing with the compassion that they're having for this boy. And you know what? He's a shy little boy, but he's, he's full of fun. He's like any little boy. He runs around. He makes noises. He plays. He laughs at things that boys laugh at. And he, all, he, all he's got is a tumor. It's nothing else wrong with the guy. And, and it, it just tells me so much. You know, lepers were cast out because they had a spot. You could just have a spot on your skin, and they would call it leprosy, and you would be expelled from your family, from your children, from the city, and the people that decided that you had leprosy were the priests. Now, there were corrupt priests as well in those days. They didn't like you. So they'd look at a spot and they'd say, this man has leprosy. And that was it. Even if he didn't have leprosy, he would be cast outside the city. That's the power that the priests had of that day. There was corruption going on. Leprosy is a type of sin. That's what it is. It's, if you look at uh, theological, uh, at least for uh, biblical uh, typology, Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God unless he is born of blood and of water. Now, this is all important to understand about sin because if you look at leprosy as a type of sin today, that the only way to be cleansed of it is by blood and by water. Now, let's speak about water because we know the blood speaks of Christ. We know that there's the baptism in water. But if you look at water again, and I'm going to show you how important this is, that the water... The Bible speaks of the washing of the water of the Word. So the Word of Christ, the Word of God, cleanses you of leprosy. Now I'm going to take that a little bit further and show you today about a man who was a Syrian commander. He was a powerful man, and I want to tell you what it says in 2 Kings chapter 5. It says, he was a mighty man, but a leper. He was a mighty warrior, but a leper. So in other words, because he lived in Syria, he wasn't in Israel, so he, he couldn't be cast out. But this was a commander of an army, and he, was, he had leprosy. And he, one day, he, uh, there was a slave girl in his house who was from Israel. And she said to him, Sir, if I may be as so bold, I, there is a prophet in Israel that can cleanse you of your leprosy. And of course, he was interested because he wanted to be cleansed of leprosy. So he found it about... Uh, this And he went to the king. This is the Syrian commander. His name is Naaman. He goes to the king and he says to the king, he says to him, I want to be cleansed of leprosy and I've heard that there's someone in Israel that can heal me. So the king of Syria writes to the king of Israel and says to him, we, I want to send my, Syrian, my commander to you so that he can be cleansed of leprosy. The king of Israel gets mad, tears his hair, his, his clothes off. God alone knows why they did that. And then... And then says to him, are you trying to make trouble with me? You're trying to make war, which gets the way kings think. The prophet Elisha hears about it and says, hold on. 
Send the Syrian commander to me, for is there not a prophet in Israel that can do it? In other words, the, wor the word of a prophet can actually cleanse of a leprosy, which could speak of a lot of things in your life. Let's go on. So he gets to the place where Elisha, he travels to Elisha. Now we'll speak about presuppositions, and then I'm going to ask you to pray with me and to act so we can get the job done. This is what happens. He gets to Elisha. Elisha breaks any protocol or rule that there is with kings. And he stays in his house. Instead of coming out and greeting the king and saying to him, or the Syrian commander, he was actually the commander. Instead of him doing that, he sends a word out. Now here we've got to understand what he says. Elisha says to him, tell the Syrian commander to go and wash himself seven times in the Jordan. Now if you go back to the ritual... In Leviticus, you'll understand why he told him to do that. Because the ritual was to go and wash in water seven times. So now, we've, now we understand why he was doing that. This was the formula that God had given to the prophet Elisha so that, so that Naaman's uh, leprosy could be cleansed. This was the formula he gave him. Wash yourself seven times. Now let's talk about presupposition. Naaman, the Syrian commander, gets angry and says these words. He says, I had supposed that he would come to me and that he would wave his hand over the leprosy and it would go. But he said he didn't do that, so I'm not going to wash in the Jordan. By the way, don't we have better rivers than the Jordan? So what I'm trying to show you is he almost lost the miracle because he didn't use the formula that the prophet had given to him or God had given to him. But anyway, the servants speak to name and they say, listen, what, forget about whether we've got better rivers and whatever. I want, why don't you just go and your leprosy can be cleansed if you apply the formula that God's given so that the principle of healing can take place. There are many principles out there. There are many healing, there's many miracles that you can have, but you have to get a formula from God, a word from God. And so he went and washed himself seven times. And when he came out of the river Jordan the seventh time, he was completely cleansed of, of leprosy. And I could tell you a lot today, but I want to say this to you. The prophetic word removed the leprosy. Leprosy could be a problem in your life. It could be something you're struggling with. And, you know, priests can do what they can. Kings can do what they can. But a word, the word that comes from the prophetic word that comes can actually cleanse you of some of the things that are, that are plaguing you today. And it could be a simple thing like, this is what God wants you to do now so that you can apply the principle of deliverance or the principle of healing or the principle of salvation. Whatever God's given to us in His Word, we have the ability to apply it. Presupposition says, well, I want to do it this way. And now that I'm hearing a different command. Well, the, you've got to fight that because presupp the power of presupposition can completely destroy the miracle that God could give you today. Middle Eastern youth are rising as are women and the changing of the God is imminent. America is about to be united as never before. God is showing His magnificence and God wants to unite this nation and He will. If you think God is not interested in reaching the whole world, you're wrong. If you think this is the end and, and God's just going to leave it like this, no. There is a, a revival and a move of God that is going to cover the earth and the youth of the Middle East and even Israel and the United States of America and many of the Western nations will have the sound that will come, that will reach into the hearts of many. A mass evangelism is going to take place. Churches on, on streets in the nation. House churches in the nation. House churches in the nation. House churches. And then I was lowered into a conversation of many, 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 many Arabs, young people, and there was this whispering. I tried to get closer to hear, and they were talking about Yeshua. And I, I felt like there was a rebellion that would take place where they would say, you will not stop us touching Yeshua. You will not stop us saying his name. You will not stop us. And this, this revolt that was taking place was because they were tired of being oppressed and forced to worship a certain way and hearing about the freedom that Jesus brings.
or cause these hundreds of thousands and then millions of young people to begin to call out to him, praise him, shout his name.